seated. There you are. Well, a very good morning, everybody. I'm Richard, as you all know, and uh, I'm going to bring some thoughts to you this morning, if I can just find them on my screen. Now, I have a problem. I have a problem. I'm using new glasses provided by that wonderful place called Specsavers. And uh, although I can, uh, I used to have very focals, which were good because I could read my screen and uh, see all you lot as well. But now I can see fine in the distance, but close to, I can't see a thing. And I'm sort of having to take them off and that sort of thing. So apologies for that. <laughs> uh, a little bit of an advert because I'm very pleased to hear about the Jumble Sale next sun Saturday at uh, uh, Tunbridge. While you're over there, why not come over to the Angel Centre and do two things in the same day? Because from 10 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'll be at a model railway exhibition at the Angel Centre. Look out for the Spa Valley Railway stand. Okay, so now, this week, uh, I've struggled to find something to say about the passage that was read to us a few moments ago. So I'm going down a slightly different route, which I, I hope and pray that you'll forgive me for. Uh, some of you won't, I know. And, and apologies if you're expecting a very erudite theological um, speak, because that's not what you're getting. Now this week I completed a task that's taken me on and off over the best part of two weeks. I think probably most of you know that one of my greatest passions is railways. <laughs> no, you don't know that. Um, not just the great big ones that you find at places like the Spa Valley Railway, but also the little miniature ones that we never refer to as toys or as a train set. but rather model railways. They certainly can't be classified as toys these days, given the price of them. What you may not know is that I'm also passionate about music. I love to listen to music, music of all kinds, classical, pop, rock, uh, even heavy metal. And I know I draw the line at country and western. Wait for it, wait for it and rap. And sorry if you're really into country and western and rap. I have over 1,700 CDs in my collection, which are all arranged in CD towers from I Ikea, as I think you're meant to pronounce it, which I don't think you can get anymore because no one but me collects CDs. <laughs> and you'll probably think that I'm mad if you didn't already because they are all arranged in alphabetical order of artists' names. Good. Now, the task that has taken me two weeks was to integrate 50-odd CDs that I've accumulated over the last few months that hadn't been put in with the rest of my collection because I'd run out of room. To cut a long story short and to get to the point, by a bit of rearranging and turfing out some DVDs, which Mike might be very pleased to have for his jumble, sir, I managed to get them all in. And what I discovered in doing so is that I have a number of discs by a certain artist. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a picture of that artist on the screen. Swifty, yes, that's, uh, that's Taylor Swift. And some of you may recognize, or, sorry, I'll start again. Some of you may not have heard of 34-year-old Taylor Allison Swift, but she is an immensely popular American singer-songwriter who has sold millions of records around the world and is now making vast sums of money by re-recording some of them of her earlier albums because she thinks she can do them better this time. She won some Grammy Awards this week, and in fact, even before the Grammys, she had won an amazing 634 music awards around the world. That's some trophy cabinet. All this coincided with the arrival of a magazine 
that I subscribe to. In fact, the only magazine that I subscribe to, and it's called Christianity. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may have seen it. They used to give it out at spring harvest, and I'd bring a box home to give out to the congregation at St. Michael's. Um, I don't go to spring harvest anymore. So, a magazine called Christianity. And this month, there is a great article in it about... Oh, it's gone. Taylor Swift. (laughs) Time magazine declared her the most influential person in the world of 2023, describing her as light in a dark world, a description that incensed some American pastors who felt that to liken Swift to Jesus, the light of the world, was incredibly crass and wrong. More of that in a minute. To put the Time magazine award into context, no entertainer has ever received the accolade. It's been given to 14 US presidents, five leaders of Russia or the Soviet Union, including Vladimir Putin, three popes, and a few titans of industry, and even Adolf Hitler. Forbes magazine has declared her to be a billionaire, and the 151-date world tour that she is engaged on, including a record eight nights at Wembley Stadium in August, could net the American economy as much as $5.4 billion. All dates sold out minutes after going on sale. Now, who is Taylor Swift? Hands up if you've never heard of Taylor Swift. Hands up if you're a Swifty. Ah, great stuff. Now, who is Taylor Swift? And... What are her credentials? During the last presidential election, she took great offence when the governor of Tennessee, her home state, declared that all Christians should and would vote for Donald Trump. And she stated publicly that as a Christian, she for one would not be voting for Donald Trump. She grew up in a Christian home, and although she would not say that she goes to church with any regularity, and there is little in her music about faith and Jesus, she does sing about regular prayer and a belief in the miraculous. She comes across as being kind and generous, often taking action when she hears about Swifties, as her followers are known, in need visiting people in hospital and providing financially for treatments. She regularly treats followers with unexpected Christmas presents and donates huge amounts to charity, all done with a minimum of fuss and a maximum of secrecy. Swift often speaks out against poverty and injustice in the world and against racial discrimination. She constantly performs random acts of kindness She comes across as a genuinely nice person, very down to earth, very next door. And while she might not wear her faith openly on her sleeve, it is there. And while she is not the light of the world, and perhaps isn't, it isn't a bad thing that so many follow her, making her one of the most influential people in the world today. But enough about Taylor Swift. Hooray, they say. Who said that? How does all this tie in with our reading today? Firstly, I want to apologize that this sermon has so far had very little in it about Jesus. But I do think it is good sometimes to take a look at the world and what is going on around us. A sermon can be used to inform And it is important that we are aware of what is going on in the world. I was very pleased to see that uh, clip from Tear Fund earlier and how good it is that we are able to support their work. Yeah. Uh, Now I've lost my place. Swift doesn't hold back in doing what she can to help others. A very Christ-like quality. 
And while we probably do not have her wealth, I certainly don't, we can certainly do all we can to help others less well off than ourselves. Lent is almost upon us. And while it is a penitential season in which we strive to make ourselves right with God and give up luxuries so that we can deepen our relationship with him, why not use it too to do good and to bring a little light into our world today and a bit of joy into the hearts of those we come into contact with? How about giving up a luxury and instead using the money we would have spent on it to buy stuff that can be given to those who need it most. I'll have to give up railways for Lent. Oh dear. Such as those who use the community larder or increasing our giving to charity. Tear fund, maybe. How about some random act of kindness? How about looking out for those who need our help, just as Taylor Swift does? Swift says she prays. Do we pray? Do we pray enough? Use her example to spend a little more time each day praying during Lent. What about our use of social media? Do we use it to moan and grumble, to gossip, to be generally negative? Or do we use it to be positive and to build people up? There is just so much we could be doing, and even if we only change one thing, it will have been worth it. But supremely, our reading today is about Jesus Christ and our relationship with him. In this world, it seems to me that there is less and less trust. Tickets for Swiss concerts sold out within minutes, and almost instantly the scams started with numerous individuals claiming to have tickets that they would like to sell you at a vastly inflated price. And of course, there were those who were fooled by this, who sent their money and received nothing in return. Politicians are sadly not good these days at telling the truth or distorting the truth to suit their own political aims. But in contrast, John tells us that Jesus came full of grace and truth. Jesus is the one that we can trust absolutely the one to whom we should look to for help and unconditional love. John the Baptist came and preached a message that pointed away from himself and to Jesus Christ. I am not the light, he said, but the one who is coming after me will be that light, Jesus Christ. Taylor Swift does not claim to be anything other than a perfectly normal human being, but the example she sets is worth noting and paying attention to. Swift helps a few people in need. Jesus, John says, from the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. We don't deserve anything from Jesus. We've done nothing to earn our salvation. We haven't done enough. We haven't merited uh, brownie points to win our place in heaven. We can't buy it with all the tea in China. But God, through Jesus, freely offers us eternal life through faith. And that's why he came. And that's why he went through the most hideous and painful death on the cross so that you and I might have eternal life. God so loved the world, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that we all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus came and died for, if, if Jesus came and died for just one person, it would have been worthwhile. We can experience for ourselves the love of Christ in our own lives right now, here today. The offer of life is for you and it's for me. And if there's one thing, and it's there for the taking. If you've never considered the claims of Jesus Christ before, and perhaps this is all very new and just a little bit scary, then take time after the service to come and chat 
to me or to one of the other church, church leaders after the service. I'm sure that if you're here with someone, they'll wait for you. Or maybe this is familiar territory. You've heard it many times before. And you, but you sense that the Holy Spirit is challenging you to make a fresh start, to rededicate your life into following Jesus Christ. Then you too, talk to us after the service. What better time to do it than at the beginning of Lent? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Lord, you bring darkness, in, you bring light to a dark world. You bring light to our dark lives. You change us, you transform us. You come and fill us with your spirit. And Lord, today we pray that you will fill us all afresh with the knowledge of your love for us and the presence of your Holy Spirit working in our lives this day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Richard Taylor Swift now. Oh, it's gone.